So Nickelodeon Kart Racers came out a few months back. The Mario Kart inspired racer with a very small amount of Nickelodeon characters to play as and speed through some Nick inspired maps. And I was basically one of the only people on YouTube that didn't think it was absolutely terrible. Well, I'm back a few months later to chat about it um, a bit further now that I've put some more time into it and all of its modes. For me, the main standout for this game was the local multiplayer. The game lacks any online features, so it quickly loses all sense of interest and will quickly be tossed aside considering the, um, the, the AI is absolutely atrocious. So once you play a few maps, you're done. But the local multiplayer does hold back its imminent demise. Of course, it's always fun to play with friends, so it's not much of a credit to the game itself that it's fun to play with others. But I had a lot of fun switching carts, racing with friends, hearing them complain for hours about how terrible the slime steering was. Like seriously, the best part of this game is the drifting. So in turn, that makes the slime parts the absolute worst. Firing bottles at each other and playing the minigames was lots of fun for a few hours. We also played the uh, capture the flag style game a lot, which was a lot of fun. And also for a standard fighting style arena game. It was surprisingly fun. The problem is after a few hours, you got nothing left to do. You've played all the maps, tried all the characters, some of which characters, the turtles, are literally just the same model and characters with just tiny little differences. For a game with like six races, then you have rip-off ones, it is so lazy. After you've tried all of that, you literally have nothing left to do, and with the lack of any diversity or interesting maps. Some maps, in fact, are just unplayable. Any and all of the slime maps are completely awful to play and experience. There is nothing good about them, and they are impossibly frustrating. I wasn't joking when I said the drifting was the best part of this game. So when there's a map where you literally can't do the only fun aspect of the entire game, of course I'm going to want to skip it. My next issue, uh, which became more and more prominent as I played, is the lack of any sense of charm or creativity that one should expect with these types of characters and this world. The lack of voice actors is only the start. There is no sense of identity of any of these shows in this game. No fun, no creativity, no sense of discovery and nothing, nothing funny at all. The Nickelodeon layer over this game is impossibly skin deep. It's painful. There is no identity outside of the models of these characters. The lack of voice acting only represents a larger issue at hand with this game's understanding and representation of the subject matter. Even the items are so artificially Nickelodeon. They are so empty of any creative input. They are all literally rip-offs from Mario Kart. All this just screams that there was zero attention to detail, as proven by the god-awful sound design. Zero creative input or thought went into it. Proven by the copy and pasted weapons and the zero care or interest put towards the integration of these properties. And for a game that is literally called Nickelodeon Kart Racers, those properties are the only claim to fame the game has. Those properties are the only reason people are buying this game. Or not buying, but we'll, we'll get to that later. People aren't picking it up because it's a kart racer. People are buying it because it has Spongebob on the front. They take it home and they are blown away by the fact that Spongebob isn't even in the game. His skin is, but none of his character or charm or anything. It's just his lifeless body on a cart that you get to buy different paint buckets for. It's honestly baffling how much they messed this up. Like even the worst of Spongebob games at least had voice acting. Hero Pants, despite not even having animated their mouths, at least they do speak. Tap the jump button twice to double jump. Woohoo! My super energy is filling up. Keep it going and I'll have super powers. When I can compare a game to Hero Pants and suddenly Hero Pants doesn't sound so bad, you know you've messed up. This is bloody stupid. 
that they thought the tiny amount of effort they put in would be enough. Now here's my next issue. I wanted to give this a chance, unlike nearly everyone else on YouTube. I released my first review after playing around 8 hours of the game. Then after that I worked with some of my friends and we nearly 100% completed it. Then I had some PS4 issues and had to buy a new one and so I, I lost some of that progress, but it's fine. So I tried to give this game a chance. But you see, like Mario Kart, this game has different speed settings. Basically, diff uh, basically different difficulty settings. You want some proof that this game is a piece of crap with no testing and terrible design? On the fastest speeds, some levels are practically unplayable. Let that sink in. A racing game has speed options that break levels. No one cared about this game, like at all. Alright, so you're on the fast mode, one, on one of those weird space levels. You're driving up front, just driving the standard speed at that highest difficulty, which is quite fast. And then you go off one of these boosts, which is meant to send you uh, onto this floating island. Drive for a second, then you hit another boost that lands you in the ship. The problem is combined with the boost plates, which you literally have to drive over, and your driving speed. It'll boost you too far. You'll fly over the middle platform and land between it and the ship. That level is literally unwinnable on faster modes, at least for me, because every single one of those jumps that happens is completely broken. Every single time we went off a jump, me and BJ fell between the floating islands. And the problem also is that the bots don't have this issue, so they land perfectly and keep going. And because it's fast mode, you can't bloody well catch up because in 10 seconds you have to do that jump again on the other side of the ship. This is just one example of the terrible planning and level design in this game. Now I went through some other little uh, other people's playthroughs and all that and I couldn't see the problem happening with them. Um, so I'm not sure like what was what was going on, but I know that's happened to me a lot and it was incredibly annoying, but maybe maybe it was just me, so take that with a grain of salt, I guess. But for me, there was a whole lot of these levels that were completely unbeatable. Okay, so I'm writing this extra bit a few weeks after writing the rest of the video. I wanted to talk about some of the sales figures from other Nickelodeon games in comparison to this one. Um, for the most part, the only information I was able to find came from uh, VG Charts, because these are more obscure games, I couldn't find any official released sales figures. So Battle for Bikini Bottom, basically the most widely praised game from Spartan Nickelodeon content, basically. Across all of its different versions, except for the GBA version, sold in total 3.19 million copies. Based off this singular website. The PlayStation 2 version selling the most by far. And then Hero Pants, including every single version of its released, including the 3DS, sold 0 0.19. 17 million. The same amount as Plankton's Robotic Revenge. Here's my presumption. Nickelodeon kart races will probably have sold around half a million. For no quality of its own. For the sake that SpongeBob is hugely popular, Hey Arnold is having a resurgence, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is very popular as well. Also, unlike Hero Pants, the game is releasing on relevant consoles. Unlike 90% of Spongebob games, Nickelodeon Kart Races actually got a lot of interest from reviewers. Lots of websites and companies posted their reviews and got the word out there. Very few Spongebob games usually have that widespread reviewing. Even if the reviews were all very negative, it meant more people knew about it and may have picked it up. So my guess is half a million at the most. My worry is that this will send the wrong message to Nickelodeon. I hope they recognise the success they had with the older games and put two and two together. We expect a level of quality and polish when we pay this much for a game. I hope it doesn't jeopardise the future possibilities of remakes and remasters and new SpongeBob games, but this game could definitely be a spanner in the works. So yeah, I could keep going on about this for a while, but I'm done. I'm done with talking about it. I just hope it's terrible scores and bad sales doesn't make Nickelodeon think that people don't want to see Nickelodeon and Spongebob games. Because we do. You have a market for it, as proven by Battle for Bikini Bottom.
just don't give us crap.